So team folders are kind of like your individual little buckets where people are going to work and host their files. It's where you're going to control a lot of your access settings. So they're pretty important. So from our homepage, um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you know, there's all roads lead to team folders. So there's a lot of different ways to create them here. Like Brett is mentioning, if I just go ahead and click on team folders from the homepage, um, I can actually pull up an interface to create one from here. Um, I can also go to the admin panel where we were earlier and create one directly from inside the admin panel. It's identical either way. It's going to bring you through the exact same interface. They just like to put that everywhere because you're going to see them everywhere. Once we actually go to create a team folder, of course, we're going to give it a name. So maybe we want to store some of our client contracts in a folder here that's going to be relatively locked down. Because it's going to be pretty important to keep this information private, we're going to want to make this a private team folder. That basically just means you have to be added first. Um, so an example is I've got a team folder in our own Zanata one that's just for everybody. It has things like our, you know, little funny Zoom backgrounds and, you know, some general flow charts of Zoho apps that are just useful to have. Um, but then I also have other ones that store some of our, you know, employee contracts and things like that. So there are some use cases where you might just say, you know, let them eat cake, right? Anybody can come in here and see this folder. But a lot of the times you're going to want to have things be a little bit more private. Last but not least, you can give things a description as you'd expect. So I'll just give this one a quick one so that we remember exactly what it's used for. Now we're kind of at the point where we're gonna add some users. So maybe I wanna go ahead and add Ben Otta here as a user. I can then choose from those set of permissions, right? So anything from you've got everything you would need down to you're only allowed to view documents in here. Maybe in this case, I wanna make Ben just a commenter, right? So you can view and leave comments, but you shouldn't be able to edit anything inside of our client contracts. So now that person has been added here, it's gonna go ahead and drop us into the kind of quick overview of the team folder. Again, we haven't really done much with it yet. Um, so there's not a lot to see here, but maybe we wanna go ahead and take a look at all of them. You know, Now we've got it in our list. Um, it's been created. We're tracking how much storage we have in it. Um, let's say here, though, we realize, uh, you know, I actually forgot to add someone um, from this view. I can come in and manage our members and I want to go ahead and add some more. And now we can add from our group. So the beauty of this is if we hire some more administrative help, we just put them in that group. And now they're automatically going to have this set of permissions in this folder. Um, so, again, WorkDrive is definitely one of those applications where you can go really quick and set everything up. But if you take the time to think through, you know, what are the different levels of permissions we're going to have? What are the different folders we might need? What are the different user groups that are going to be accessing these different folders? You can save yourself a whole lot of ongoing management if you've kind of planned some of this stuff out first. Um, additionally, from here, like Brett showed on a document, you can see activity across the entire folder as well. So if you're seeing some weird stuff happen, hey, I would have sworn we had one of these documents in here. Where did that go? Um, you know, you might see, oh, someone put it in a different little subfolder. Great. Now I know where it is. Um, within here as well, you can kind of filter these down. You'll find if you have a lot of people working in a team folder, you're going to see a lot of stuff that is A-OK. -okay. You know, edited a file, left a comment, you know, did this, that, and the other. But you might want to check in on sharing, trashing, deleting, moving, and things like that that can be more disruptive. Um, so now that we've actually created our team folder, we've got it over here on the left-hand side. Up at the top, we have some additional management options that we can do. Um, so under this team folder details, uh, you know, it can be a little bit misleading, though each of these is their own little tab. They actually all bring you to the same place. They just start at a different point. So our team folder details, how much storage do we have? Who are all of our different members? What's the description? You know, pretty basic info there. Um, members, we already talked about, so I'm skipping that. If you go to that members tab, it looks exactly like it just did where we were before here. Um, settings here, if you wanted to change things, make it public, you could do that. If you want to allow uploads via email, you can go ahead and turn that on. It's going to give you a big old programmatic email address that you can forward to with an attachment. It's going to add it to the folder. Um, here, you could say, you know what, we actually want to kill the ability to share externally. We want to disallow people from downloading. And then down at the bottom there, you've got that setting for a specific folder where I might say, I want all of our folders to be um, people who have 
um, or I want all of our documents to be automatically converted to Zoho Work Drive. Um, quick question from Sean that I'll cover now just to make sure it's clear. Um, team members are people who have to have a Zoho license. That is correct. Um, so if someone's going to be added as a team member, they would either need to have a work drive license if you have it as a standalone, or they would need to have the relevant bundle license like Zoho One, Remotely, or Workplace in order to add them through this interface. Um, down here at the very bottom, last little thing, if you do need to delete it, it's kind of tucked under the fold. Um, I always forget where that is, so I like to highlight it. Uh, it's just all the way down at the bottom of the settings. Um, trash and activity, they're pretty self-explanatory. So if you do have any folders that are in the trash or any files that are in the trash, you can restore them from there. Activity we've already covered. Um, one thing I do want to highlight here, because I've actually had this come up when implementing this application, is that you can manage all of your different external links separately from this folder. Um, so an example is you might have an external share link that goes out to maybe just someone who is at your company, but not a user of WorkDrive. Um, but you also might have one in the case of client contracts that goes out to your legal consultants, right? Maybe you just want them to have the ability to upload and view some files in here. Um, but let's say that um, you have a bad experience with the people that are managing your you know, legal services now, and you want to disable just their link. You don't want to go through and remake every single bit here and have to move all the files. Through this external sharing interface, we can actually just go ahead and get rid of that link, right? So we can copy it, we can view who's been using it, we can change any of its settings, and we can delete it all just from within that interface. Um, so nice to have that because generally speaking, you know, things change and people who had, had access in the past might need to not have that access anymore in the future. Um, lastly here, not lastly, but within a specific team folder, of course, you can create any files. You know, you can create subfolders within this, right? So you can think about each of these as basically its own little world with its own file structure and formatting. Um, you know, you can create any documents from here as you would expect, as well as upload files, folders, or pull from another cloud system. Um, one little thing as well that you can do here that can be very useful is when you're in an actual team folder, you can search within that team folder all just through one interface. So if I was in my client contracts and I knew, oh, you know what, there's going to be a contract in here for Zanata somewhere, but it might be in any of these specific little places, you can just come in here and search directly through, and it's only going to show you relevant documents from that particular team folder. <clears throat> 